Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Buzz Expo. We are a little late today as we had some connection issues with uh, the live stream, but now here we are. And we are happy to introduce you to Dr. Urschka Stasbetenyi and Matthäus Strauss from Arctur. Today we will talk about tourism, heritage, and technology. Welcome, you two. Thank you for uh, inviting us. Hey. It's a pleasure. So tell me, how long is Arcto already operating in the travel business? Well, this is an interesting question, actually, because uh, Arcto is actually a high-tech company. So almost 30 years of experiences with high-tech. We are owner of a supercomputer center. So we have been for years gaining experiences in high-tech and specialized in Industry 4.0. This is why this Tourism 4.0 uh, was born. And uh, you know, all these complex technologies like blockchain, artificial intelligence, and expensive and uh, difficult to use. Mm. So gaining experiences in different EU projects uh, to bring them to small and medium-sized enterprises. And then we have been like, brainstorming uh, where can we bring in our experiences and this is how tourism popped out because we we have saw that tourism is like a tabula rasa in sense of you have big players using the technology mm. and the small like the rest of the of the world yeah. not using it because of the and this gap is so huge and this is where we enter in and bring try to bring solutions to connect this uh, foster collaboration and give these smaller players the power and boost them to build uh, and be part of all this data sharing and you know and all these things around. So actually, we are fresh in tourism. There's like three years now, but in the meantime, running many national and international projects with universities, with uh -huh. the biggest tourist service providers in Slovenia. So. Uh, we are really honored to work with all these experts and yeah, so this is the, our story, yeah. how we enter tourism. Yeah. That's cool. And now, well, we have the best, uh, the best situation ever because uh, we are due to COVID in a, in a very unique situation. Yeah. And uh, mm -hmm. now that we're talking about tourism, how do you suggest to restart this tourism? Well, or when we started, the first thing that we like changed or focused in was like not the tourist is the king, but the local community and quality of life of the local community is the focus. Because we don't, nobody wants tourism, you know, what happened in Barcelona, in Venice, where people started to, you know, to fight against tourism. This is not tourism, nobody wants to, to leave it. So mm. what can we change? So if you put the local community in the center, and whatever you build, whatever solutions think about this, then you respect this uh, as a perspective. And then everything is like sustainable because we are talking mm -hmm. about sustainability. So what we do, we have started with the main pillars are first to understand what is the impact of tourism because this uh, perceptions is very subjective because every one of us is a tourist. So we all feel... Uh -huh, now I'm an expert because I'm also a tourist. It's mm -hmm. not always the case. And so many discussions, many decisions I made, like, you know, uh -huh, so there are two experts who were traveling, but at the end, business is something else, you know, organization. And, mm -hmm. uh, and so here is, we, we want to help get all this data spread around by destinations, municipalities, and so on, and help them make a new value out of them to build mm -hmm. this new so this is the main the first step would be understand the impact of tourism which is not just negative because we saw now with uh with this crisis that how it's like you know this layer no it's uh, mm -hmm. what changes the whole society if tourism stops it's incredible and so Absolutely. for us was an an experience now to measure this zero because this would help us really to make, to compare then with mm. the data that was in the past and the data that are co coming in. Yeah. Um, so the first thing is to rethink, okay, what kind of tourism do we want? Do we want the fastest way to go back where we were or what we believe? No, rethink and, okay, how do we want tourism to be? Focus mm. on this community and then build it around. 
Yeah. So this is our suggestion. And it was interesting because we, during, like really at the beginning, um, we, we started a um, tourism from zero an initiative. It's also website.org. Um, and with uh, innovator, this is academic world with universities from all over the world joined us and students were like, uh, we, we made a questionnaire first to see what is the first reaction because just nobody was, there was no tools. Okay, what is now, what is happening? We just made a simple, you know, Google Drive questionnaire, getting yeah. like data answers in, and now, like step by step, within this project, we are seeing how the young generation wants to make the uh, build this bridge between uh, local um, tourist service providers, which are not able to use platforms and bring, you know, somebody is just making baskets or somebody yeah. just. I don't know, making a kind of drink, you know, it's there's farmers, they would never start maybe the, you know, the younger generations, but this generation, which is now doing it, it's not able. So the young generation now want to be a kind of super host or whatever. Oops, uh, this is nice. Sorry. Just need to stop it. And, um, and bring this data about this tourist service offer in the platforms and be this kind of help for this kind of mm -hmm. um, offer to, to come, this is this local, you know, this real local experiences. And I find it like, this is the way, because we all talk about, you know, uh, local offer and this new tourism coming. And I, I find it like really fantastic how this young generation wants to, and I want everybody to invite that, to help the younger generations in own environments to, you know, to take this energy mm -hmm. and take advantage of it. So this is something that I find interesting. Yeah, that, that sounds, sounds really, really great. So really everybody can have some, uh, some benefit from that. that. That's really cool. Yeah, yeah. And um, well, yesterday, uh, we have been talking about uh, uh, yesterday yeah, cool. already here in, uh, in this chat. Um, you have been uh, presenting the tourism impact model. Yeah. What is the, the main added value of that? This is exactly what I, I was mentioning before. What we think is that uh, we need to start. Mateusz, if we want to share the screen, just we have some clips. Just for, yeah, um, of course. Really. I think I'm sharing it now. Production. Okay, so just this is just as a background. Is yeah. about. Uh, this changing perception of uh, tourism in a sense, nobody, it's not that everyone can just, you know, uh, have expert opinions is let's put the, the real data together, many real mm -hmm. data, let's link it with SDGs because it's very important that on global level together, we uh, get the same kind of data so we can compare and make this complex, different kind of data really simple to understand with simple visualizations. And this is what team is actually about. And to help destinations, to help municipalities, to help different decision makers, because after yesterday, some, uh, people were contacting me about, is this also about for the business? Of course, because when we talk about the ecosystem, everyone is part of it. And we talk, mm. when we talk about the more data we get in, you know, in one, on one place, the more everyone gets out of it. So the main idea is behind is to make us, you know, to start this process of understanding what really tourism is about, what really the impact is, and what is important and what we have learned is, you know, in this situation, because the SDGs, the beginning were measured on national level. So we get, you know, we all want to reach these goals on like the countries have all compared. Mm -hmm. But now we have learned that how important it is to get the data on local level because then if you get, if you have the data you can play with it and say okay the new wave hopefully no not is coming do we really need to close the whole country or we can make a kind of okay a red zone green zone and you know still let tourism to be you know some parts you know you, you have this kind of simulation on real data mm -hmm. and this is for like when we started to talk about it two years ago it's like mm, okay nice but now in this situation, every one of us sees how important for our quality of life is to get politicians and all decision makers tools to really, you know, have the base to take decisions that are 
like you know that we don't then start is this really you know necessary or could be you know so this is what it's interesting now how fast you know in within one week changes the the world and these tools can help to to assure that our quality of life is not you know just put on zero or yeah, just locked down yeah this is absolutely it. absolutely mm -hmm. So, and when I did my little introduction this morning, um, uh, I thought we would talk about uh, tourism, heritage, and technology. So, um, heritage and innovation, for example, if we use that word, seem to be two opposite terms. Uh, why and how do you connect them? Um, yeah, uh, I think that a lot of people, that the general public thinks that uh, heritage, cultural heritage is about the past, and innovation is about the future. Um, and cultural heritage on one hand is about uh, protecting the old, is about rigid systems. And innovation on the other hand is about creating new, it's about breaking boundaries. But it doesn't have to be like that. Uh, it shouldn't have to be like that. And actually it's not like that. Um, many cases uh, prove that cultural heritage, of course, is about protecting uh, our cultural values of the past, but it's about bringing them into the future. It's about uh, preserving them for the future generations. Uh, and this is how, uh, of course, cultural heritage is about innovation as well. Um, and um, as technologies evolve, um, so as more and more virtual reality, augmented reality, holograms, different sorts of applications are popping up, uh, we should also think how we can um, transfer the values of cultural heritage, our own values, um, into the future using these technologies. Because if we don't do this, um, of course, it might happen that the future, um, the future where uh, the younger generations will live in, um, will be without um, the values of cultural heritage, about the knowledge that cultural heritage teaches us, uh, the insights, and of course, the learnings, uh, bad and good learnings um, for the future. And technology here can help us. Um, and I think that this is globally is becoming uh, an important topic. Um, we at Arctur and uh, at Tourism 4.0 have connected this topic mostly with tourism. Um, because uh, we see that cultural heritage uh, can be a resource for tourism, um, a resource for new touristic experiences that are very unique, that are very embedded into the local context, um, and that are um, actually um, the most natural uh, choice when designing new touristic products. So when you're before, when you were asking, how should we restart uh, tourism? I think it's it's how uh, sh it's the question is how could we uh, embed cultural heritage in these new experiences? Because mm -hmm. if you look at cultural heritage, uh, you see it it's quite evenly dispersed uh, around our regions. There is not big differences between large cities, large metrop metropolitan areas, and then smaller places, uh, because in the past smaller places were Many of them were big, were large. You know, it, it's not that uh, periphery today was periphery 2,000 years ago. Uh, so periphery today can tell a story, a big story uh, about our past. Um, and this is where we see this connection between uh, cultural heritage and innovation, uh, technological innovation. Mm -hmm. That sounds very interesting. And who in the end benefits from the digitalization of cultural heritage? Yeah, the, where, where I see is that there are at least two uh, groups that benefit directly. So one of them is, of course, uh, the cultural heritage institutions. Uh, digitization, so creating digital copies, digital twins of cultural heritage. So when we are talking about uh, material cultural heritage, um, as well as uh, so tangible and intangible cultural heritage. Um, with digitization, we create copies that are very, uh, that are much more precise um, documents of the current state. 
Uh, so, as I said before, the, the sector of cultural heritage is also about preserving the past. Uh, and digital technologies enable this preservation of the past. So let's say that institutions that deal with uh, preserving cultural heritage, uh, whether it be museums, libraries, um, archives, um, uh, parks, um, they, they uh, with digitization, they get a new uh, source of a new type of preserving the current state. And then on the other hand, um, it's the general public or the uh, interested parties that um, can, using this digitized uh, elements, um, can experience this cultural heritage in a new way. Um, uh, because what digital technologies enable us is uh, not solely to see digital twins of the reality, but they enable us to see another digital layer on top of it. So if, if I speak in uh, with examples, let's say we have a, a castle ruin. Um, if, Mateusz, maybe you can show something. Yeah, yeah sure. Uh, I'll, I'll play. Uh, um, so uh, let's say we have a castle ruin. Maybe yeah, I just mentioned. So I'll, in the background, I'll, I'll be showing some of our um, short clips uh, about what we are doing. Um, so uh and later on i'll explain the the steps of how mm -hmm. how we create them um but let's say we have a castle ruin when a person uh visits visits this castle ruin um of course one only sees a castle ruin um, but using digital technologies um one person can could see more of it it could see uh the former state of this castle ruin, so the whole castle. It could see the information about the castle ruin. Uh, so in a way, it's it's a new way. Uh, years back, of course, we've been, for years now, we have been using these info panels in front of, uh, mm -hmm. uh, in front of uh, different monuments. Um, but we all know that this is uh, not something that really works, right? How many, just ask ourselves how many people actually read these info panels. Um, but when you start talking about uh, VR glasses, uh, goggles, uh, then um, holograms, um, different mobile applications, people get more interested. And, mm -hmm. and again, another step uh, and another uh, characteristic is that these technologies are not static. They enable a, a dynamic presentation uh, of, of certain content. Um, so let's say this is the, the second group then, it's, it's the general public or the tourists. But of mm -hmm. course, who no, really no, benefits? The first one, because I jump yeah. in. I mean, I'm a mother of three kids. So for me, bringing them to this kind of location is like, oh man, we are going to, you know, to, to visit the stones. So no way. <laughs> If whatever we can add to it, make a story out of it, it's the only way that I bring this generation because, you know, this is digital world and uh, physical world and digital world. They are living here. I mean, I can just fight with them and, you know, say, no, you, you, you shouldn't use all these uh, devices and so or, or try to bring, you know, this world here and hope they will, you know, take this history of ours and live it in another way. You know, this is. So it's but who really benefits is the society as a whole, right? I mean, it's it's the it's the thing that we um, we enable uh, or we facilitate that the, the values on which our uh, societies are built are transferred into the future. Uh, and I think that this is this is also what Urska wants for her kids, and this is what heritage institutions want wants for their part. Um, so. Uh, but that's uh, let's say the uh, these are the groups that benefit the most yeah that's very interesting i have to say <laughs> and i like the video <laughs> really really cool uh, so we could already see that so what what are the steps needed to be taken in this process of this uh, getting the world digital yeah so uh, i i started uh, earlier um, a little bit about that so the first step is creating a digital copy of the reality 
because this is uh, <clears throat> this is the basis on which we built um, later on. So using and we mostly use three digit, digit, digitization uh, processes. So um, we uh, create a three D digital copy of this castle ruin, let's say that we were talking uh, mm -hmm. about. Um, once we have this digital um, copy, uh, we can add additional digital layer on top of it. And this could be this layer could be uh, different information, uh, old photos, uh, people, old, old people, older people talking about uh, their past or their experience. Uh, let's say that if they remember or if it's that uh, young, uh, this cast of one. Um, but what we can also do is we can recreate the missing parts of the castle. Uh, using again 3D modeling, we can um, in a way um, make a reconstruction, uh, of course, an informed reconstructions, construction, reconstruction based on um, data that we get from heritage institutions uh, using old sketches, old uh, paintings. Um, so any uh, material that uh, to some extent shows how this uh, castle used to look like. Uh, and once uh, reconstructed, again, we can add another uh, layer of information on top of it. Um, so uh, imagine that we would be doing this in real life. We would need years to plan how to actually reconstruct or rebuild a castle. Oh, then really? we would need, probably we are talking about millions to invest uh, in this. Uh, and then once reconstructed, we of course need um, content for these buildings. We, we need uh, activities that would fit into these buildings. And we all know that this actually costs more than the initial uh, uh, investment, investment in the reconstruction. Um, so here we could tell the same thing using digital, digital technologies, because let's be honest, not all castles should or could be renovated, uh, but they all have an interesting story to tell. Um, so um, this, let's say, are two steps, uh, digital copy, uh, then uh, digit, another dig digital layer. And then the third step is asking, how do we present uh, this information to the general public? Uh, is it through video? Is it through VR uh, goggles? Mm -hmm. Is it through uh, augmented reality apps? Is it holograms? And the answers on this question, on this, these questions, um, is based on uh, who are we um, planning uh, this uh, product to? So, for so who um, who is the target group? Uh, what is the story that we want to tell? Is it a technical story or is it a more emotional story? And, and let's say for emotional, we would say go to virtual reality because it enables the whole body to experience something. If it's technical, let's do it in a video or let's do it in a, a augmented reality. Um, and um, so it, it's a complex, uh, we, we say it in three steps. Of course, we could divide it into more steps, but this is, uh, these are for us these general uh, steps um, that. Uh, start with digital copy that benefits cultural heritage institutions, and then it can go into di different and diverse ways further. Very interesting. And uh, again, very impressive video. I liked it. <laughs> That's cool, really. Um, you know, I'm, I'm a fan of such, uh, such things, so you really got me. Um, but we need to get to the last question that I have prepared for today. Um, we have been talking already about tourism uh, 4.0 and um, I know you mentioned that yesterday already uh, the tourism 4.0 partnership what is that about well we initiated as I said three years ago we just put the idea out uh, bringing technologies into tourism put it like made a website and then started like from all over the world yeah we do it too you know and then we were traveling around on many events and presenting these first ideas and then started the development with the project and then we said okay how can we somehow just make a 
way that this community, these people come together. So we started this partnership, which is no fee, no obligation. So everyone is welcome. Just visit our tourism for minus zero uh, dot org uh, website. You will see where you can join us. It's really like two minutes process. It's just to bring, you know, this R&D spirits uh, and people who really want to follow this vision that we have, that put, putting uh, local community in the center, in this quality of life, and then build, you know, this make tourism part mm. of this life. So this, what we do here, we share ideas. There are many projects. Uh, there are possibilities, you know, for people to connect. Uh, everyone, it's not just institutions, you know, where we have business, uh, education, or whatever. It just, because we believe that tourism is really something that connects everything and really can be this driver of SDGs and this layer that mm -hmm. uh, brings this added value to locations where maybe there is nothing, not, nothing other that they can build on. Although there, there were this a lot of things to build on, but still something, you know, these stories, these emotions, mm -hmm. this experience that we all want. You know, we are all travelers at the end. And so exactly. Mm -hmm. So please, everyone is welcome to join us, yeah. as I said. Yeah, yeah um, and as you have seen, nobody bites. <laughs> so <laughs> no. get in contact. Yes, yeah. so you you're around on uh, on your booths on uh, on bus yeah. travel on the on the expo mm -hmm. part. Mm -hmm. So whenever anybody would like to have more information or join yes. or just wants to mm -hmm. talk, uh, feel free to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, get connected, ask for an appointment, uh, chat, uh, have a video call, <laughs> whatever you would like to do. I think you both are happy to answer all the questions that come along, and. Thank you for the presentation. I really, really enjoyed it. And uh, again, sorry for the delay, you know, technically this hiccups can happen in no? live. You <laughs> yeah. see, yeah. We, we didn't uh, we didn't pre-record. We are live, so people, uh, you know how that works. And as again, you, Matthias and Ushka, thanks a lot for your time, for your presentation. And uh, yeah, let's stay in touch and uh, see you again soon. Yeah. Thank Have you. Have a great day. Thank bye. you. Bye-bye. Thank bye. you. Bye-bye.